Roll the intro. I just wanna dance and feel good. Hello guys, welcome. Podcast 13. It's been too long. It's been way too long, guys. Um, I've got so much to tell you. It's just unbelievable. I've been away too long. It makes it more fun because it's just more stories for you guys. Got to jam it into one podcast. Uh, but no, I read somewhere really when it comes to podcasts, you've got to be consistent. And I haven't been. And I hope this is enough lighting because it really do not look like enough. Um, and I hope my laptop isn't that dead that it's actually frozen right now. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, this is this is terrible, but I'm back. I don't care. I'm I'm gonna have to like just do these more regularly. That's it. I just gotta stick to a schedule and do it. All right. So yeah, slight technical difficulty, but all is good. All is well. Um, on my last podcast, I really enjoyed it. The Defiant ones, based on the series that I saw on Netflix about the great Jimmy Iovine and of course Dr. Dre and all their trials and tribulations and success amongst their you know during their their years of hard work and what led them to the success they have today and that was a really that, that was a really different type of podcast to any I've done like based on the actual thing I've watched you know I mentioned things I've seen in the past here and there movies and stuff but you know um, and this podcast, part of it is more about a book I read called The Art of Not Giving an F. I'm not going to swear on it because it's a Christian channel now. Um, no, I had a lot of kickback from that, from my, my, my parents, like, well, why are you telling people you're reading that? I was like, yeah, but you don't understand, you haven't read it. Anyway, if you've read the book, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't, um, yeah, it's the art of literally choosing what to care most about and what not to in life um, it's a bit of fun really I don't know how serious to take it but it addresses like how people are so positive that they don't actually address the negativity in their lives the, the realistic things like that view that the bitterest truth is better than the sweetest lie that kind of thing and there's a combination of stories in there that give you a perspective on life and certain meaning to certain scenarios that are explained in the book anyway I recommend it um, yeah I want to do like a book review but I haven't got the patience I haven't finished reading it yet but that book this week has been probably the reason it's been a pretty terrible week and the reason it's been well it's the reason that I've got through this week at the same time literally I, s- I swear to god Monday I was in the garden in the sun, 21 degrees, first day, first bit of sun in England, you know, everyone's like, they go mental, I was in the garden reading the book for about 3-4 hours, uh, just such a good book, you know, it just kept me reading, literally, and that's what I did, I was there too long, what did I get, sunburn and sunstroke, not to mention I already had a cold, kind of, from the week before, I was really half ill with that, and then the combination of both just kicked me down this week like literally like felt like I was like had the flu I don't know but I don't recommend sunstroke um I, or sunburn to be honest like, I, I thought I wouldn't get it with my olive skin but no nope, I was wrong and thanks to this book that happened but having read this book it kind of kept me going it's like quite motivational in that way that you know it, it could be worse really it's not that bad it's just a bit of sunburn a bit of dizziness sickness and all that and I had a temperature and I was just coughing all the time and above all else this red spot on my nose that you you may have noticed by now um, yeah it started just like a a spot and now it's like a scab and if you pick a scab you know what happens you get a scar so I'm not doing that I'm just trying to look after it um, they gave me like the nurse gave me like a like some sort of bandage kind of plaster thing to put over it but if I do that I'm gonna look like I've just been in a boxing match for this video so I thought let me leave that off for now you know and then do this podcast and then whatever but yeah I wasn't gonna 
scare you guys with a huge bandage on my nose like I got beaten up I got mugged no but uh, so it's been a fun week to say the least um I read a bit more of that book the other day it's just like I hadn't read it since I couldn't read since Monday because I was so ill couldn't do anything lost my appetite but enough about that you know um this podcast before all this well I was meant to do it this week at some point then I got ill but before this was meant to be more about my trip to Italy to Milan and of course to Lake Garda something I mentioned but I didn't well I literally did those vlogs and then for a while didn't upload much because that's when the cold started but um yeah I probably got ill in Italy that's probably where because bearing in mind it was raining every day but probably one of the best like holiday little holidays I've ever had of course we drove down to Milan to my uncle's house my aunt and uncle and my cousin um, so we had a great time because uh, my cousin actually lived with us in London for a bit so we um, yeah it was good to catch up you know and uh, one of my other cousins that lives in Milan too with his family you know a lot of my cousins are older than me so you know so most of them, I mean some of them are already married most of them a lot of them are getting married for Christ's sake and it's just like three or four of us that aren't we're like the single club <laughs> I, I don't know it's just weird like the one, all the ones that live down south it's more traditional down south they get married early you know with that they, they've chosen their husband or wife to be from like when they're like 15 it's ridiculous and then my cousins from the north or or me and my brother from England, you know, London, Milan, it's a more modern kind of culture where you don't get married so young. Why should you? Nowadays people really don't. But anyway, enough about that. The holiday was just amazing. The hotel we stayed in in Milan was, it was top draw, I can't remember the name. It's just so long ago now, it's all a blur. It was a blur because it was just so much red wine and food and partying and, well, it was Easter, we had to celebrate Easter. We did take a day and go around Milan. I would have done a bit more, but when you're with other people, you can't just enforce your own plan on other people. I did I did some vlogs. I hope you enjoyed them, guys, because they were really fun. I didn't, didn't realise till I got back and looked at all the footage. Got got a bit misty-eyed. Because it was like, wow, did they have that much fun? And of course, they're great memories for me and my cousin and my brother. Because we've got our own like WhatsApp group where we used to keep in touch a lot all the time. But my brother just don't respond on there. It's just me and my cousin just talk on WhatsApp. Forget my brother. He just doesn't seem to respond because he's so busy and he... Different girl every week, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, it's Saturday. It's the FA Cup final today. Big day. Big day. So I'm just doing this vlog just to get back into it, really. Because I've been a bit down this week. I haven't been able to vlog with how ill I've been as well. Got a new SD card for the, the GoPro. Because some of the footage... Some of the footage in Italy, like, didn't actually get recorded because the SD card was broken. I don't know, it must be a hairline crack or something. So I ordered another SD card. Another 128 gig. Because that lasts a long time. And my plan for the summer is to bring the Go both GoPros and film just on them purely and then edit when I get back because to bring this laptop was just a nightmare last year and you never know how these airlines treat your stuff well they never treat it nice that's for sure they never I mean in my experience they've never treated my chair nice no matter what you say or do it's going to get battered in some way um, but we didn't have that worry when we went to Italy because we drove bit stressful my brother hates driving but we all took they all took turns driving not me I was just like the VIP screw it I just sit in the back listen to my music that's it but we stopped in France and a place in the middle of nowhere and there's like one restaurant where all they serve is beef because they're in the middle of fields where there's cows there was a McDonald's across the street I literally said to everyone come and go to McDonald's everyone was like nah we're too healthy nah my brother him and his healthy lifestyle you know he's like nah no mcdonald's so we had to go to this terrible place they none of them could speak english 
we don't speak French, we speak Italian, so that was just more confusing. Um, but we got through that in the end. Uh, they tried to pretend we didn't give, give them a coupon that the hotel gave us to get like 20% off. They tried to scam us. Buggers they are. But yeah, we got, got over that. Next day, another, what was it, seven hours, seven hours of driving? Yeah, it's like, in total 13 hours. On the way back that was, but on the way there it was a bit quicker. Um, of course we took the Euro Tunnel. Um, but yeah, second day we get there, lovely weather of course. Bit similar, it was really nice that week here. Bit similar to here, I'll be honest, with the weather, but it's just Italian air. You know, it's just different. I don't know, and I've, I've been to Milan in 2016 for my cousin's wedding. Um, I've been to Milan in 2010. Long time ago, very different time to be there. It was snowing when I went in 2010. And I was just a kid, I was like... 14? That was a crazy time, there's loads of us. Um, but yeah, it was a bit different this time. Met a lot of my cousin's friends, who I've heard about for years. When she was uh, staying with us in London, she'd be like WhatsApping them, you know, FaceTiming them all the time. Um, we'd be just in the background, making it awkward and making it like just making weird faces and stuff. Um, but yeah, so, you know, when you put a face to someone you know, but you never met, you know, that's how it is. So that was nice. Um, and then, yeah, I had Easter there. And then after four days of being in Milan, we went to Lake Garda, um, stayed probably in one of the most well adapted hotels I've ever seen, bed and breakfast that is, I've ever seen. In in Italy, well, or ever, for that matter. Did not expect it on that level, but basically it was a family who uh, got a son with a disability, so they were aware of all the needs and, you know, things you need in an adapted room, you know, a bathroom, all the, all the stuff you need, all the personal stuff, space, ramps, you know, wider doorways, lifts, all that. Um, a lot of things that some people take for granted and you just assume they have, never assume. I've learned in my in my life never to assume that, that any building is accessible. But yeah, so it was. But we took my cousin with us, because the four of us, just a bit boring to be honest, and spent some time with my cousin. Um, it was really fun uh, for that reason, because before going we were a bit apprehensive, like we don't know anyone on this lake, we're just gonna be the four of us, it's gonna be boring, you know, what's the point, it's going to rain. We knew it was going to rain for those days. But my cousin was like, yeah, I'll come. Um, off work. She was off work. Um, so that was great. And the, the family at the hotel were just... Bed and breakfast is not hotel. I keep saying hotel, but... The family at the bed and breakfast were... They really made us feel at home. And, you know, it, they, they bought this old nursery and converted it into this bed and breakfast. 13 rooms all adapted, disabled friendly, and they lived on the on the terrace, on the roof, they, well, top floor was theirs, and I met their sons, um, so it was great, like, really good family, like, really uh, switched on, really uh, motivated to make a difference, which is great to see, it's great to see, um, some areas in England aren't even that well adapted, some bed and, bed and breakfast hotels. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't, couldn't believe what, what we found, we found a gem, really, and the lake of course, yeah it was raining but every now and then the sun came out, we had, we had most days it was like, it would start raining at 3 o'clock and in the day, in the morning it would be nice, and early afternoon till 3, and we had the, the time to go to Verona as well, uh, the city of Romeo and Juliet, if you saw, that was one of my, the final vlog from Italy, from the Italy trip. Um, yeah, what an amazing city as well. Full of tourists, just so many English and German tourists. The whole lake, anywhere surrounding the lake is full of English tourists. And, yeah, that's different from the south, because the south, you don't see many tourists. And even though, technically, there we were tourists, I don't like tourists. I don't agree, like, well, 
I mean, for that area, there is a very affluent area because they make so much money off dumb, stupid tourists who pay ridiculous amounts for things that aren't even worth that much. You know, tourists would pay anything because they go there with money, you know. Um, they're really kind people up north. South is a bit more old fashioned, a bit more. I don't know. It's just a different kind of culture, but I'm from the south, I love the south. The food is just so much better, but the north has good food too. Um, the people, the accent is a bit strange. A bit of a funny accent. Like people from the south make fun of this accent all the time, you know. It's, it's like you go to America, you've got different accents from east to west, you know, north to south. In Italy, the accent really changes. Um, but yeah, met a lot of um, fellow Italian stuff, you know, were there on holiday too. Like tourists from other parts of Italy, not just English and Germans and Dutch and whoever else. But yeah, I do recommend visiting the lake. Not in April though when it's raining. But there was one town I went to called Riva at the top of the lake where it's like um, there's a scene from. James Bond, Casino Royale film there. Um, it looks like Lake Como, it's a similar kind of lake, one of the northern lakes of Italy, so, you know. Um, a lot of them look similar, these towns, but I could tell, I was like, it definitely filmed Bond here. But I'm quite good with my movies, and other people were Googling it, like, no, are you sure? I don't know about this, I was like, yes. Like, uh, uh, give me that at least, at least. <laughs> um, but there's so many little towns on that, Lake is just unbelievable. One even where Mussolini used to live before he got captured by the rebels and strung up in Milan. Um, I know a bit of my history. Uh, my uncle loves to tell stories about the Romans and like history of Italy. He's just obsessed with that, and it's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing, but um, yeah, it's quite interesting. Uh, the north compared to the south. Um, some of it's more medieval as opposed to Roman. Different, like, some of it's a bit newer, like, the era of, like, Da Vinci and Michelangelo, that kind of era of Italy. A bit more, bit posh, kind of, after the Romans. And you saw a lot of that in uh, Verona, too. Um, but, yeah, the local wine is just too good. We brought a lot back with us, I'll be honest. And the journey back was just horrible, but it was so worth it for the holiday we had. Just rain all the way back, and then when we got back here, it was freezing. But um, I was just so depressed it was over just that, that quickly. But it was that good. All good things come to an end. We know this; uh, it's just proven. Uh, I go back to the south in the summer. Uh, my cousin probably won't come down because she's working. Well, I don't know; she might go on her own holiday, but that's fair enough. But um, yeah, we're definitely going down south. Got so many people waiting to see me down there. Uh, we've got too many friends down there. And family. Half of them are bloody married already, but... Yeah. Still, all my cousins. Um, but that's a long way off. I mean, it still feels like winter here. I mean, earlier this week was lovely. And, you know, since it... In, even in Italy, I didn't get that much sun. Because it was raining half the time. But yeah, like I said, Monday just... I made a lot of mistakes, basically. It's my fault, take responsibility and just get get over it, basically. Um, but you've got to laugh, like. It's every time after a lovely trip somewhere or holiday or something really good, a lot of bad stuff happens to me, like unlucky things that are kind of my fault. Well, in this case it was. It's just kind of funny. It's ca is it karma? I don't know. Not really, because I didn't do anything bad in the first place. Um, but yeah, it's life, isn't it? One minute you're up, one minute you're down. It's like the Frank Sinatra song. Flying high in April, shot down in May. Uh, it's just one of them. That's life, literally. Uh, it looks 18, 18 minutes and 20. Like I thought I was talking for a lot longer than that. Um, and my voice is actually somewhat keeping up. If it goes at some point, just, well, you'll know and I'll know. Just be some like echo of like a frog. I don't know. A screaming cat or something. But um Podcast thirteen. I really thought I'd have a lot more done by now. But I've I've missed so many, haven't I? 
Oh, before the Defiant Ones previous podcast. The last one was like quite a while back before that. So I need to really get consistent with these. And I need to plan them out. But um, what I do have for you is a few quotes from uh, the book The Art of Not Giving an F. And you need to hear these quotes because you may, you, some of you may not understand them. You may not agree. But I don't know. Just, just uh, have an open mind when I read these out. I mean, don't judge me. Don't, don't really. I don't know if you want to judge the author. He's a bit crazy anyway. But um, here we go. Right, guys. I've got the quotes here. I just remembered. I haven't explained to you what happened in Pauchia football, mainly because the vlog has been delayed. I'm trying to get the footage off my mates. SD card but I haven't been able to meet up with him yet so I will have that soon well that'll be vlog it probably will be vlog 38 or if not vlog 39 if I do a vlog in between but that is yet to be explained that's a long story actually um, but yeah along with these quotes I mean like I said keep an open mind but yeah I do promise after this I will explain what happened in Pouch of Football. But yeah, first, so this is, this book is called Subtle Art of Not Giving an F, a counter, counterintuitive approach to living a good life by Mark Manson. So, um, starting with a shorter one. We can only truly be successful only at something we're willing to fail at. If we're unwilling to fail, then we're unwilling to succeed. So what I think the message there is like, you know, don't be as afraid to fail. Don't be scared of failure, because it's what enables you to succeed. Like if you don't fail at something, how are you going to be learning a lesson and in any way motivated to try again? I think that's what I mean. That's a pretty simple one, really. Some of them are a bit more crazy than that, but that's that makes sense. If you think you're always going to succeed, you're not. Most people that have succeeded have failed to begin with at some point. All right, next one. We suffer for the simple reason that suffering is bio, biologi can't read. biologically useful. It is nature's preferred agent for inspiring change. We have evolved to always live with a certain degree of dissatisfaction and insecurity because it's the mildly dissatisfied and insecure creature that's going to do the most work to innovate and survive. But it's true, if you're unhappy with the situation, you're always going to strive for more, which is a good thing, in moderation. Now, it is in our DNA to be very self-critical. Like We do crit criticise ourselves a lot. I'm guilty of it. Uh, but I think it's... It's like you've got to take responsibility sometimes. If something's your fault, don't blame others. But I mean, yeah, dissatisfaction is common in most people. No matter how rich and famous they get. But it's what will get you out of your bed in the morning. Like, I'm not happy with the way things are going, let me improve this. As opposed to, I'm not happy, let me not do nothing and keep everything as it is. That's the worst thing you can do. Alright, another one. You and everyone you know are going to be dead soon, and in short amount of time, between here and there, you have a limited amount of F's to give. It's true. Very few, in fact. And if you go around giving an F about everything and everyone, without conscious thought or choice, well, then you're going to get F'd. A lot of F words in there. Um, this guy's crazy the way he wrote this book. It's true, you can't care about everything. There's nothing to do with you. You know, do you. Otherwise, if you worry about everything, you're going to be, as he said, effed, basically. If you give an F about everything. He's got a point, but, I mean, people don't agree with the swearing. Like, I've, I've heard from a few people, like, they just don't agree with the swearing he's done. But, I mean, that's kind of part of being human, isn't it? I mean, let's just say my parents didn't agree with me reading this book. Because they hear the title and they're like, well, that's not educational. 
Here we go again, another quote. We are apes. We, we all think so Chris. I can't read. We all think sophisticated with our toaster ovens and designer footwear, but we're just a bunch of finely ornamented apes. Yeah, there's too many material things. Why do we care about these little things? You've got, I mean, these quotes are just too long, but I've got two more. So our culture today is obsessively focused on unrealistically positive expectations. True. Be happier, be healthier, be the best. Better than the rest, be smarter, faster, richer, sexier, more popular, more productive, more in vivid. In vivid? More admired, be perfect and amazing, and crap out 12 carrot gold nuggets before breakfast each morning while kissing your selfie ready spouse and two and a half kids goodbye. Then fly your helicopter to your wonderfully fulfilling job where you spend your days doing incredibly meaningful work that's likely to save the planet one day. Yeah, it's true, we're all obsessed with it all these things but what is the perfect life what is you know all this money is that going to make you happy with all that are you going to be happy but yeah that's like not that quote doesn't really explain the whole thing there but yeah blame google okay the last one victim mentality some choose to believe that there is nothing they can do to solve their problems even the even when the, they, in fact, could. If you know what I mean. Let me let me start again. Some choose to believe that there is nothing they can do to solve their problems, even when they, in fact, could. Victims seek to blame others for their problems, or blame outside circumstances. Yeah, it's true. I mean, something can happen to you. It's not your fault. But then, how you react after that? is kind of your responsibility you know if you're blaming others like oh it's their fault like so you know if you lose a job you say oh it's the manager's fault you didn't like me and then for after that you say that at every job interview or you just hold that hold that grudge and think i'm not working for anyone again it's your loss because you want to have a job it's your responsibility how you react like you can hold a grudge but don't let it affect you forever and there's a lot of examples of that in this book. People who did things based on what someone else did to them. I mean, you can't do that. You've got a responsibility to bounce back, really, and prove prove those people wrong. But yeah, I definitely recommend this book. So many more great quotes. If I find any more, I will I will let you guys know because they're they're just a few. Probably not the, but probably not the best one I mean he goes into such detail that you can't really just put them as quotes it's like a whole paragraph or two but yeah I mean that book did help me this week it's different different approach to like how to act in life like everyone's so like obsessed wait let me straighten up Everyone is just obsessed with positivity. Where is that my voice going? Positivity. Everyone is, is is clinging to that. When actually there's maybe issues in their lives that they can't address because they're focused on being positive and they just lay it off and lay it off until it all becomes too much. I mean, you've you, you got to be realistic. Like I said, that bitterest truth is better than the sweetest lie. Um, so much people to take for granted too it is a material world so there's a lot of points there to take away but it's just hard to keep perspective until you read a book like this I mean there's a lot of similar books but the title just gets your attention straight away it it does sell and my brother he said to me like don't don't read into it it's just a book they're trying to sell books but, yeah. No, the way this guy's written it is just more than that. And he's got a point too. It makes you realise 
I went through a phase of like trying to be happy every day. It don't work. Just like some days you're not on it. Some days you're not. I don't know. You're not buzzing about every little thing. And why should you be? Um, if you're negative sometimes, it, it leads to positivity. That's what the book was trying to say too. Like if you address the negative stuff, then you can go ahead and be happy because you're not hiding anything. You're not lying to yourself or, or anyone else. That's all that matters really. If you're lying to yourself, then you will be depressed. Um, you'll look in the mirror and you won't like who you see. Basically, there's people who have to say in the mirror every day, like, I'm happy or I'm the best or something just to motivate them. But if you think you're the best all the time, then how can you want to do better if you're already the best? Surely saying, you know, I'm not the best will motivate you more to be the best. I don't know. But there's people who like shout, I'm the best in the mirror every day. Something like that, you know. No, I mean, I'm not saying, like, be depressed all the time but you know address the real the real problems in your life otherwise you'll never solve them and then it become a bigger problem so that's my take on the book uh, from my point of view uh, because I, I, I mean I'm, I'm quite a realistic person I have to be I mean I feel like sometimes socially like it, it's not good to to like state the obvious but I always make a wheelchair joke, trust me. Like, the amount of fans um, that were at the uh, Liverpool game, in the disabled bit, that when Liverpool scored, they all stood up. You know what I mean? It's just funny. I find that funny, that kind of stuff. But not everyone does. Everyone's different with their humour. But in my case, yeah. So, humour is the way. Really. But, I mean, you know, dark humour sometimes. Even that works. Um... Just, yeah, don't be so serious either. At the same time. Because we've all got issues. We've got things that... Everyone's got something they've been through. Like, almost every human being. Regardless of age, really. You know, when you meet someone you just don't know. It's, you know, don't judge either. You can't, because... So, there's always someone worse off than you. And someone better off. That might not deserve to be there, but... Yeah, jealousy is not good. Anyway, please do read that book at some point. And while I was away, like I said, I was a pouch of football. I made half a vlog. The big issue was that, yeah, it was just depressing on Sunday. After, it was a great season. And we were just a bit miffed because we lost the last game and we didn't get into the playoffs to get promoted. Basically, Norwich uh, were two points points yeah below us and we needed to beat them on the last game to get third which is a playoff place to play a game to get promoted but what happened was we lost that game 3-0 and the game before that 2-0 with Saturday we killed it I scored two goals in each game on Sunday so to on Saturday sorry total of four goals on Saturday we won both games like 4-1 3-0 we smashed it against easier teams bear in mind and teams slightly below us in the table but not that far behind really not that far off so basically Sunday came and we just fell apart do not know what happened but after the first 2 nil defeat well that one of the goals was good but I mean we should have been up for it more we should have been more aggressive gave them too much respect and then the last game against Norwich Having lost 1-0 to them already recently in regionals and drawn in the league, we thought, you know, we thought, like, okay, we can definitely give this a go, you know. Nobody at the beginning would have said, oh, we're going to lose 3-0. Nobody. They wouldn't have said they're going to win 3-0. But I take responsibility for the first goal because if you let the ball go across you to the far post, you're not going to get there in time when they're going to score. And that's what happened from one of their great set pieces. Because they're just so good at set pieces. And they just win set pieces and execute them perfectly. Uh, I mean, that goal is what, what it was. When we lost 1-0 last time, it was the same thing. And it was me that literally, I was an inch too late to stop it across. 
and I knew it and my teammates knew it and we all knew it uh, of course we win and lose as a team you know it was just we didn't start at our best we didn't like score basically the earlier you score the better really we hadn't they scored first and then it just went from there it kind of fell apart second goal was a big mistake for me just literally fell asleep not fell asleep but was caught napping and they had a shot from well not far out but where the shot has gone in because I wasn't marking the right space and that's happened before and of course I was putting goal for this game um, I played in goal many times I'm a bit crazy as a keeper but that thing I should have saved both of them I should have saved should have stopped happening like, you can see it happening but you can't stop it you know what I mean I mean the third goal I wasn't in goal for that one we changed keeper and I went outfield but just a depressing game and the annoying thing was my dad wanted to see me score but I scored all the goals Saturday I mean I would have done anything to swap them to Sunday and we still well might not have won the other games though but Sunday we needed to win big time we didn't well, we need to win every game but yeah we didn't <laughs> fell apart on the last game but it's been a great season don't get me wrong I'm not that down nobody is because we might not have been ready to go up we would have gone up and been battered by some teams and struggle against some you know teams on our level the teams that got promoted above us uh, but yeah another season in the championship we're going to have fun score lots of goals again be towards the top of the table you know hopefully go up maybe next season and be a bit more ready for it bearing in mind we've got seven or eight players we've got a big squad um i was i was really ready to go back up because i've been there before with my ex-team just go back and just upset them that's what i wanted to do even though i've done it in the cup scored a goal against them um but i just yeah but it it means the champ championship is not easy either but it's certainly for some of the players is more of an opportunity to score more goals for the less experienced players uh if you know what i mean like if you follow normal football you know when certain teams go up they go straight back down and we do not want to do that we want to go up there and play well so another season get everything perfect and then go up at least maybe win the championship and go up strong when you go up from a playoff and you're like literally the last place up it, it's difficult it's difficult to stay in the league and my team's my team I'm in now have been there before like the season I left they got promoted the season after or no on them yeah something like that they got relegated then they won the league and got promoted again then they went back down and they don't want to do that again but I don't think it was, it was it's not like fear it's just like a mental thing like we kind of knew that but it's not like we gave up we were trying it just ran out of steam credit to Norwich though I, I hope they win the playoff well, and go up if not we'll be playing the next season and it'll be a bit of revenge a bit of fun really great game when we play them anyway and last time they did say we should have beaten them <laughs> told me that anyway uh, that was fun um, but yeah it's been a great season um, and now the uh, Padre Padgett Football England team are off to Finland for the European Championships I think so good luck to them everyone involved a few new players um, so well done to everyone involved in that good luck um, yeah Padre Football is just part of life now isn't it for me it's always been for a long time now and I've been watching on YouTube a few different styles the way the French play Argentinian league even very different style, very old fashioned compared to how we play in Argentina the style more, a bit more aggressive and so I learned a few things from that the French are obviously top class the Americans too there's just so many other countries that are far more developed than us well, they're, they're the only two I would say France and America England probably third best team in the world when it comes to Padgett football
I've made so many, so many power chair videos over the years. Um, unfortunately, my brother was too lazy to film these particular games on a Saturday. Got a bit of it, but my mate filmed most of it. So at Sunday at training, I'll get the USB, the SD card off him, and then hopefully you'll see that. Be a bit longer vlog, but I don't want to dwell on it too much. I don't want to be too down about it. Like maybe for the purpose of the video. I put some sad music, but you know, don't take it literally. In these podcasts, is where I'm more honest with you guys. Um, like I said, it's been like an annoying week, so to just get in front of the camera is just therapy. Like I don't have a shrink. I don't go to church and confess all the time. I don't. Well, I probably do pray sometimes, but not regularly. The question the other day from a social worker, like. They, you know, they fill out a form, they ask you the typical questions, like standard questions that, you know, they brace you for, like, sorry, I have to ask you these. One of them was like, are you religious? Do you go to, uh, and you go to church? Or do you pray or, you know, go to places of worship? I was like, well, not really. But I didn't know what to say to it, like, I, when people ask me, are you religious? I, I don't know. Maybe. I've got a shelf here full of saints, and religious items and holy water and stuff that people literally seem to think I I need like they are oh, bless him uh, God will cure him yeah it's fine <laughs> it's funny really I mean how how can someone like me be that religious you know I don't know I'm not gonna get into it but I wear a cross time to time for fashion reasons not really for religion reasons but when I'm in Italy I'm kind of more religious. But I don't, I don't follow things word for word. But yeah, it's a strange question to get from a social worker. They always do these kind of things, but yeah. Not something I expected. Like, I've heard all the typical questions, but that's a new one. I don't know. I don't know what, what, what it changes. It sh shouldn't change anything. But yeah, I also saw the new Avengers Endgame movie. Oh my god. Did anyone cry? Did some people cry? I mean, I'm not... I'm sorry, yeah, to Game of Thrones fans. I'm not a Game of Thrones fan, but... I heard that was really good as well. That was really crazy. Um, it's been... It was a crazy... Few weeks. There was, um... The Liverpool comeback, and of course... The Spurs comeback against Ajax. Lucas Moura. So it was in, like, in the space of a week, there was... Endgame came out. Lucas Moura did the comeback. And... And, and uh, Game of Thrones. So it's like the most entertaining week on TV. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, Jeff, as they all say. Uh, just people can't believe it. The Liverpool comeback was amazing too. Uh, that cheeky little corner that uh, they, they took while they weren't looking, you know. He's walking away and he turns back and takes it. Classic. Like, I'll never forget that. And then Spurs, I thought we were dead. I thought we were out. At half time, it looked. Hopeless. Well, we had one goal. Then Lucas, the legend, when he scored two more. I mean, he was a fringe player. Now he's just a legend. Like if I buy a jersey, it's going to have Lucas Moore on the back, number 27. I don't care. I was trying to work out which player, which player. I don't know, maybe Ali, maybe Ericsson. No, I'm getting the Lucas top, for sure. In that green as well, because in that green jersey, we've done a lot. In, in both that game and the City game which nobody gave us a chance in to beat City was unbelievable too but the Ajax one was just we went crazy in this house I lost my voice from then and just yeah basically yeah, when we get to the final when we're in the final I can't believe it like Spurs like oh, oh last time we were in the final what I'm sorry what we're in the final when do you know what I mean it's new to us we can't not win it we have to win it Liverpool, you've had like five. Give us one. I mean, you got battered last year. Got doesn't you got more experience one in that case than us? But you know, you got beaten. So maybe you're just gonna get beaten again. I don't know how simple it is, but it's not gonna be like loads of goals. Loads of goals is what we don't want because Liverpool will probably outscore us in that sense. Loads of goals we don't want. We want a calm, easy game. Keep the ball. It'd be like one nil, two one or something. I reckon it'll be a tight game. 
because we know each other, you know. If we were playing Barcelona, and Barcelona are in this final, I would say we would lose. And they, because if Barcelona got to the final, I'm sure as hell they would have won it. Because when you get there, you can't lose it, you know. A team like Barcelona, even though they got batters, still Barcelona. If they got there, had they got there, so I'm kind of glad if we beat them in a way. I'd rather face a team I know, and that we could beat. But yeah, Ajax, they're kids, and we were men. Now, it's a bit of a shame, because it's like a bit of a fairy tale for young kids to get to that final, and it's the last opportunity they had to be together in that team before they all go to Madrid, Barca, and other teams. Maybe Tottenham in some cases. Van der Beek, I hope. Or De Ligt, probably in Madrid. And the other guy, uh, De Jong to Barcelona. So yeah, half the team's gone already for Ajax. But you know what they do in Holland? They stop the league season, like the league games for the Champions League. We don't do that here. We still have to play week in, week out. So we were knackered from playing. We played like what Saturday or something, and then we still beat them. So don't know, you know? I mean, they don't. We don't do that over here. We don't stop Premier League for for Champions League. Nobody else does that. But in Holland, they do. Maybe because they're just not used to getting that that far recently, but. Come on, that's just unfair. Like, why don't we do that too, then? I mean, it might help City. We might should be able to win it for once. Um, if they don't get banned from it, that is. I think that was Guardiola's idea. Um, maybe he, gra he grasped up City, his own team, and said, like, can you, like, ban us from the Champions League so that we don't have to be in it and not win it? Because if you're not in it, you can't win it. And that's good for it. Yeah, so he, if you're not in it, you can't lose it, like, you can't not win it. If that makes any sense. So maybe it works for him because they can't win it. He's failed with them, he's failed with Bayern too. Like, he's a great manager, don't take anything away. City, you know, they, they bought the league, basically. And Guardiola's probably the best manager to do it. Best players, thanks to him, I would say. But Liverpool deserved it because they, they tried really hard. So, I don't know. Had a lot of accolades this season. Liverpool, like, top goal scorers. Two of their players, Mane and Salah. Um, amazing. And Van Dijk, player of the season, I think. So they really deserved it in that sense. So they're a bit dejected and downhearted now. So they're going to play Spurs. And hopefully they'll carry on being depressed. Or they'll just be really angry and go out and batter us. One or the other. But it won't be easy for either team. I've got a mate who's a Liverpool fan. And he's like, uh, maybe I should come around and watch it. I was like, uh, no, if you care for your life. No offence, you know. <laughs> because my dad goes mental. Be jumping up and down, hitting the ceiling and stuff. And it was really crazy enough for the Ajax one. I, in my life, I've never seen Spurs do this well. Italy, yeah. But Spurs is my local team. Inter Milan, yeah, I've won it, yeah. But Spurs is another level for me. It's It's unreal. I'm, I'm going to go on too long about it now. But yeah, it's been a crazy few weeks. A lot of good and bad for me, and... Yeah. I'm just... At a point where i just got to tell it all. It's like too much has been going on. And there's a lot more to come. Hopefully better weather, me outdoors. I've just been in a week, depressed. Um, so thank you guys for changing that. Well, thank you me for changing it by doing this, but... Thank you guys for being there, and I will upload this ASAP. I want to upload it before the cup final today. But guys, uh, I want to thank you again. My voice is kind of all right, not so bad. It's the best day so far. I'm getting there, I think. I think. Let's hope. Thank you guys um, for putting up with me once again. Podcast 13. I want to try and do more regular podcasts for sure, if not vlogs. Or both. Why not both? Yeah. you got to get, keep your fingers in one on one pie. I don't know. But um, we'll see. Thank you guys. Stay tuned for the next one. The next vlog as well. Hopefully the Padger football one. Reaction to my whole weekend there. Thank you once again guys. And I'll see you very soon. Take it easy as always. And I hope this has taken the edge off your day a little bit. In some way made you smile, laugh, something, any sort of emotion will do. And subscribe, of course, and like, share a comment, 
I mean, share, share and comment. Yeah, and all the usual stuff. Thank you guys. Take it easy and I'll see you very soon. Okay, bye.